Um, this week, so the next, this week the theme is precision. I think you guys chatted about that last week. This next theme that I posted was back to basic. And I, you could take it as like back to basic or back to more classic. I think it's really good to revisit. We get, uh, we get on a path sometimes to kind of modify everything and, and change everything. And it's nice to sometimes go back and revisit those classic, more classic exercises. And with, I felt like back to basic followed precision really well because now with the precision that they can have a little more precise movement, now it's time to go revisit those exercises with that more precision, right? To get more out of it. Now they understand how to get more out of it. Hopefully they can do those basic exercises even better. So that's really what I was intending with in that sequence of themes is going from precision to back to basic and revisiting a lot of those really basic exercises that are so fundamental to the knowledge. So um, do you want me to, do you guys have any questions about that, comments on that, things that you've used or not used or? Um, well, last week we did precision, we ended up talking a lot about for pet peeves, right? Rather, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I, yeah, I could probably start it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help people understand and, and talk about the best ways to cue things. Mm -hmm. um, just to fill you in on what we did. Yeah. And then my other comment about basics is because we here at Synergy don't teach so many of the classic exercises. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, we do though. We just, we just do it in a, yeah, we do teach a lot of the classic. Yeah, I mean, that's all. Yeah, but we don't do the rolling really very often. But there, there is that appropriate population for that. So I think it is good to, it's good to go back and rethink why are we doing that. So let's take something, you know, for us here, we don't use that. And I think that all of you guys are part of that group too. We don't use a lot of the rolling because of the amount of load that ends up on the spine with the rolling uh, up and down and that, that there isn't that much of a need for it. But can you guys think of when that rolling up and down is, is a good thing to do? Or a population of people where that is worth doing? So what, what do you mean by rolling up and down? Not uh, like. Mm -hmm. Like roll, like roll downs, roll ups, uh, overhead stuff. So hip ups, full hip ups, and roll over, and short spine and long spine, and all those things. They all are actually going for the same thing. But in your head, what is that thing that they're going for? Like, what would be the purpose of those exercises? Spinal strength for dancers and athletes, I, I would say. Stretching characters, mm -hmm. stretching, yeah. So, right, it cre okay, it creates a certain amount of strength, but remember, strengthening is very specific. So, in that sense, if somebody is doing that movement in the activity that they do, that's somebody that you want to strengthen in that way. So if somebody is a gymnast, for example, they have to be able to forward bend and in a loaded way and survive it. So do you, should you be strengthening that person in that way? You should, but if they're doing a lot of it in their home stuff, maybe your goal isn't to do more of it, it's maybe to balance it. So you have to figure out if that's, you wanna do more or if you need to balance it. But there is another purpose, and it's something that we don't talk about a lot in the, in the like instructor training courses, is about the fascial lines, right? So the best way to stretch that posterior fascial line, which goes from your head all the way to the plantar fascia, right, under your foot. So the best way to put that fascial line on stretch, I'm not warmed up, don't laugh, is to go this way right? And mm -hmm. include the head, include the feet, and, and get that stretch. So now I've got my stretch from the bottom of the foot, the back of the calf, 
the hamstring, the lower back, the upper back, the lat, and the hands finishing that backline fascial stretch. So that, that is something that's happening with that, and that is a loaded exercise. So that is the purpose, one of the purposes of our rolling up and rolling down and overhead exercises. So I think forward bending this way and also uh, overhead, it's called overhead, right? Hip up, yes, overhead, <laughs> are really great. So the, uh, that way or this way, right? This is the other way we get that same flexed foot stretch through all the way um, through and then the stretch at the back of the neck. Right here we get that same fascial lengthening, right? So those are important for somebody who's really tight back there, but who doesn't have a dysfunction, a disc, a d specifically disc dysfunction. And the reason we worry so much about disc dysfunction is because it uh, doesn't speak to you when the dysfunction's happening, it speaks to you to the next day. So you could get through a whole routine with somebody doing all this loaded flexion and the disc will speak to you the next day. The other reason why it's hard to do is because you do have to have a certain amount of strength to be able to do it without causing a disc injury, right? So the best way to cause a disc injury is loaded flexion with rotation. And you know that we have some of those exercises in our repertoire and the most, the most, the biggest one that we have is that um, the saw, right? The saw is loaded flexion with rotation. So unless somebody can get up and out of the spine a little bit or has the strength to support that, they really shouldn't be doing that because then you worry about the disc moving out of position. So a lot of repetitive rolling can cause uh, that disc to get disturbed. And I just want to throw this out too. So uh, yoga has a lot of forward bend and that's a loaded flexion, right? So the purpose of that is that lengthening. So the other, the third, right, is this forward flexion, right, is that same thing, right? I'm stretching out the whole posterior line through and hanging there. But this loads the spine too. We don't really have this in Pilates. We have passageways through it sometimes. We don't really have this, but we do have elephant, right? Elephant is supported. So here we've taken a lot of the load off the spine and we can still, if you press back into the heels here, you can still get a lot of that stretch without the load. So elephant on the reformer, which lately I put on the mat a lot, which is very similar to the downward dog, actually probably close to the same thing when done well, that is a lot less load for that same type of stretch. So if you were gonna incorporate, so if we talk about back to basic, yes, the roll down is one of the most classic, classic exercises, but I think it's a really complicated exercise because we have to, right, find your C lift, find your C curve, find that articulation through, right? I'm not just crunching my spine and rolling mm -hmm. down. I'm lengthening my spine to roll it down and keep pulling longer and longer to get that lengthened position. And I have to do the same coming up. Otherwise, I'm actually sadly mistaken, right? So coming up, lengthening neck, pulling back, lengthening, pulling back, lengthening, pulling back, lengthening, and then stacking back up. So keeping that space and length in it. So it's actually not a basic exercise <laughs> to be rolling at all. Teasers, I mean, right, and this is the easy version. Teasers and bent knee teasers and straight leg teasers are even more complicated, right? It's so easy to go wrong, but it'd be great. So in, for example, I have that super strong class and I can take them through it in slow motion and really get all those pieces put together but you really wouldn't, I don't think it's a good idea to roll down any beginner with too many pieces, right? Even if you were going for that stretch, I would talk about the lift and the strength, right? The lift and pull, that C-curve here rather than the C-curve rolling, 
those are all great, great things to work on. Yeah. So when I think about really back to basic, it's sort of almost that pre Pilates repertoire, but with more oomph. So I mentioned this week to my students that the most advanced Pilates instructor gets the harder, gets a really hard workout out of, out of a beginner class, gets more out of a beginner class than a beginner in a Pilates class. And the reason that that's true is because you understand as an advanced Pilates practitioner how to isolate. Right? And as a beginner, not so much. As a beginner, you're just learning the motion, but you're not really understanding. So going back to basic would be breathing. It would be uh, tabletop, predict the load. It would be single leg stretch, uh, double legs, all the fives, single leg stretch, double leg stretch, but even maybe head down and then maybe adding head up piece by piece. Adding in layers is what I would do is start with like, for example, single leg stretch. I would start single leg stretch here, leg high so that there's not too much work and there's a lot of control. But so that would be layer one. Layer two would be piecing together this upper ab part just here without the legs, right? I could layer in an upper ab. Then I would layer it in, third layer would be supported leg out. Right, so this is all building up to, I haven't even gotten to my single leg stretch, which would come next, starting up, reaching, holding, and then holding that, and then putting in that. So creeping up, layering on step by step by step, I think is a great way to then connect so people feel what they're supposed to do at each phase of the way. So I, that's how I was thinking of approaching this back to basic is we've got, I mean, I could spend 45 minutes on those fives and they'd work super hard, but I'd never have to go away from the fives to get it, right? So those are kind of classic basic. And then once they're really strong in the fives, that's when you can consider, are they safe enough to do a roll down? Are they safe enough to do um, any of those loaded exercises if it's appropriate for them? Which are classic, but for me, not really basic, yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I always thought you had the, the knack for making simple things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> yes, I have a knack for making simple things really hard. So we've been through, you know, in the past few weeks, we did Pilates poses. So we did like kind of more holding week. This week we did the precision week. We go back to basic that those basic exercises better look really good by now <laughs> so that that was an intentional not just a random that was very intentional progression wise um what else what else can you guys think of as terms of other exercises that would be worth revisiting in a more basic way Plank, thank you. Someone else wants to do the plank. No one else wanted to say plank. <laughs> right, so plank, how would we layer plank? Right. Squats. Oh, and squats. We could do squats. Squats are functional basic, so that is great. So planks and squats. Okay, how do we, how do we layer that though? So if we, let's take a squat and then we'll do the plank. How do we get somebody to be able to do a squat well? What are the pieces of that? Where are you going to go? I usually have to go to wall sit. Wall sit. Okay, so let's say wall sit's our goal. Or a wall sit or wall slide and then free squat. But even before you get to the wall squat, where would you go? Or where would I go? <laughs> uh, well, glute work. Glute. Okay, which what glute work would you go to so you wouldn't complicate things too much? That's a very loaded, not fair question. <laughs> Is that uh, only, or can we be on any of the equipment? Um, yeah, I would say shout out any of it, and then we can figure out how to do it on any any apparatus or on the mat. So if anytime I want to isolate glutes, um, 
or you know make sure that the glutes are working um i start with bridge thank you yes that's exactly what i was thinking yeah so bridging anywhere you want right any kind of bridge helps turn on the glutes and it's uh, when people go wrong with the squat, I think it's because the, the glutes don't actually fire very well. They end up translating forward and getting their back. And so I think I would, I think I would build up bridge to build up squat. Mm. Yeah. You could also do any of the prone glute things, right? Those are an option there. I don't think they're as related. <laughs> so in a squat, you've got knee flexion, hip flexion, in the bridge, at least you have that knee flexion and you're using those glutes and then you're just adding the hip flexion. It's not like flipping the body over and doing a huge different thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you could work on, right, external, that's right. So if we were going to do squats parallel, right, we could work up, okay, we have our bridge, we've got these on fired here. Um, what if we want, and then we can take that to our wall sit, and then we can take that to, uh, and, and the other, sorry, I'm gonna come back to your, the other piece of that wall sit is the trunk. So what could you do for the trunk, and then we'll come back and turn it out. Yeah, so chest expansion, right? Opening the shoulders, opening the back, being able to hold that trunk upright. So if you were, here I've been doing a lot with just the theraband in front of the thighs, pulling back, pressing forward, getting that open, right? And that would help them line up so that when we go to our wall, whether you wanna be moving them or sitting them with slippery socks, <laughs> you can get that back, 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 and the butt back, and they're in this nice line dug in in their heels, and you've got this beautiful positioning. Yeah, so then I can really ask for butt pressure back to get the back working rather than all quad working. Yeah, so that, that sort of that build up. Now, Genevieve's, to Genevieve's point, she's saying, well, what if we wanna get to a turned out squat, how do we progress there? And she suggested maybe clamshell, right? So that would be a good, what, what are we engaging in the turned out squat that we're not engaging as much in the parallel squat? The mead? Actually, the mead works more in parallel. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. It would be the... Minimus. It would be the, yeah, rotators, right? So piriformis. And your hip rotators are going to start working if we start to turn out. So, just, Clem, go ahead, sorry. Just a quick question. Hi, everybody. Um, Hi. And so I was watching one of Minjay's... Um, videos you know that's, that's in the staff room and it was like one of those guy videos but they were doing a um bridge with the like legs or knees open feet together like that's we don't we don't ever do that like i mean could because i feel like it might go into someone's back if we did that what do you think about that to activate the glutes is, is genevieve doing what you were describing yes um yeah, but in bridge. Yes, I can't see she's cut off on the bottom if she's doing bridge. But oh, yes. Yeah, so, she... yeah. um, so are they going here? Are they going diamond or are they going just turned out? Um, it's like diamond, yeah. 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 It's hard, yeah, it's hard to see how far apart your legs are, but. My legs are really apart. Okay. Yeah, no, no, not that much apart. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, like, feet like, together? Yeah. Hmm. Not so much my favorite. Yeah, like I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because I was like, oh, that's, that's like clamshell almost, but it's like we're on our back. So anyway, just, just putting that out there. Yeah, I actually I like this better. I like it, yeah. And I, because here I can, I'm pressing the bottoms of my feet together. Maybe I can turn so you guys can see. There you go. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm on a phone. I can't. I'm pressing the so, bottoms of my feet together and my knees oh, and are the, and I'm very okay, diamond. Okay, and the sides of your feet are going into the good. floor. Say that again. 
The sides of your feet are going into the floor. The sides of my feet. But yeah. the bottoms of my feet are together. Yeah. And I can... Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's that what Genevieve actually was doing. Feels pretty good. Okay. The... You might actually like that. It's nice on the, on the SI joint. I guess as long as someone doesn't get like too into it where they might arch their back or something. Yeah, I'm not that inclined to arch. Well, I guess I could arch my back there. Like to get higher. I don't know, I would do that. Or if you don't pull the tail away. Yeah. 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 More glue. Uh -huh. Is it okay, okay for you? Yeah. That feels very strange. But it feels strange, it but feels like I can't quite like. Yeah, it's hard to. This, like, <laughs> yeah, to balance, but yeah. that's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep my legs from going woo. Well, I mean, partly my reason too was asking you guys that because I was like, huh, like I I want to try that, but like I want to see what they think about that before I like test. You guys are my test group first. So. We're, test, we're being your test group. Yeah. yeah. This I like better wow. than trying to do this. This I feel restrict. And so this comes from our reformer, but in the bottom, mm -hmm. I like, okay, this works. If I really dig heels hollow and imagine that I'm about to do this on the reformer, it works better for me. Then if I just think about bridging here for the mat. So that pull in with the hamstrings or either. Squeezing the heels so yeah. Squeezing those heels, cueing into the heel squeeze. That works. Yeah. Um, I, I don't tend to do that. I, but yeah, I don't tend to do it. I think it's um, fine. I don't think there's anything really wrong with it especially since we do it on the reformer, but I, it's not very functional. Okay, so thank you. On the reformer, except for strengthening the rotators. Mm -hmm. So, and then the clam would be that same goal, right? Um, clam would be the one opening to get those rotators. The nice thing about what you were suggesting, Allegra, is that both sides are working at the same time, which is more like the squat. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is a something to think about, yeah. <laughs> and then but then working into the open squat right you could do that on the wall right turned out uh, sit on the wall and you could decide how wide I tend to keep people pretty narrow um, and then pulling in inner thigh activation wrapping the heels right so you could do sit or again you can start working towards rolling with something behind, kind of going down and up into your squats here, but keeping that posture really nice. That's a great way to work up upward into that and connect the body. So all of it to connect or parallel, same thing, all of it to connect posturally back, right? That's what we're going for later. And then I was thinking of reformer, um, side sleeper, and even scooter and scooter as well. Yeah, so side sleeper and scooter are great ways to warm up to doing a squat. Yeah. Um, I, yes. They also are a great way to warm up to doing lunges. So. What did she say? I couldn't hear what she said. Yes, side she, also, she was mentioning side sleeper mm. as a way to work up for a squat. And, and I often cause that, call that the, the first version where the heel is on and you're in parallel. I often mm -hmm. call that the single legged squat. Um, and you could also do that in turnout for the turned out squat. The difference being it's a one legged and versus a two legged. And mm -hmm. then Kim was also suggesting scooter, which is a great way to warm up for a squat. Potentially, it's also a really great progression into a lunge. So what do we need a lunge for in functional life? Thank you. We need a lunge in, in functional life to get up off the floor. Yeah? So try getting up off the floor without a lunge. It's really messy. Yeah, and the only way to get there that I can think of 
without that lunge, right, is to go this way. And then we have a problem if there's a back issue, unless they're strong enough to find and flexible enough to find neutral and find their way up from there, right? So we need a functional lunge to get up. And, and actually, if you want a little, a little fun for you, um, and just a little side note is, uh, and I think you guys have already heard this, but I'll throw it out there. There's studies on longevity. And the studies on longevity show that a person who can get up off the floor without using their hands has a much greater predictor for longevity than somebody who cannot. And I don't remember the exact details, I have to read it again. But so it's a great test for people to be able to, well, and also people who can squat to the floor and back have greater longevity than people who cannot. Wow, right? That's a big deal. Can you imagine? So getting them into squats and getting them up and off the floor are really key things. So if you want, just it's not that easy to get up and down off the floor without your hands. So maybe try it and see. I mean, going down and going all the way down to laying on your back without your hands at all, and then coming back up without your hands at all. Right? It's not the simple without your hands. Oh, you can however you want, but just without your hands. Yeah, it's not that easy. So now, now take your 80 year old, right? How are you gonna work with them to get on and off the floor? It's through that lunge. So, so if we want back to basic, of, if we're thinking functionally getting off the floor, we're talking about definitely having a lunge in that routine somewhere. So that's scooter, really very specifically scooter is a great one. I've been working with, since we don't have reformer in our virtual classes, I've been working with um, fake scooter, <laughs> bend and straight, right, bend and straight, and then just holding straight and pulling, and release and pulling, right, and then holding straight leg and bending back leg. Right? These are all great ways to strengthen for your lunge, um, and you need that functional lunge, right? So those would be taking things back to basic, taking apart the motion that you want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah, so you have that front leg. You can go into a lunge. You can push back. That would be like our Russian split, and then bend again, right? Push back. I'm going up because I can't go back on a solid floor, right? So that would be like my Russian split. Um, and then I could flip that, hold that front leg straight, and bend the back knee and push that straight and bend the back knee and push that straight. These are all pieces that we need. If you wanted, you could even have a bent leg and bend the back knee and push it straight. And then you can progress that to going down and pushing straight, going down and pushing straight. And then once you have that down, right, that's it. I just can push up from there. That's my lunge. That's how I'm going to get up off the floor. Yeah. Well, then we talk about, like Kim mentioned, the weak toes, people who have trouble with bending their toes. Yes. Okay. Did we talk about going on top of the foot? Yeah. yeah. You can. That takes a lot more strength. Yeah. So you could also have them turn out the back foot. So you could have them go, instead of that, you could go back of foot, turn out the foot and come up if they need to, or turned out and going down. It's a, not as nice on the knee for sure, but pressing up and then turning out to finish it is something they could do. Yeah. I have clients who will, you'll see them, they'll come up this way, more sideways and then square into two feet and then walk into to the center. Or ha if they have a shoe on, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's easier. But what, you, what I have in mind is for the elderly population, and those are the ones who can't bend their toes a lot of the time. <laughs> well, you're not an elderly. You just have a toe thing going on. 
But um, what I'm trying to do is if they were to go down at home, how are they going to get back up on their own? And at that point, for an exercise, you don't want to upset the big toe. But at that point, if the big toe gets upset, it's, you know, it's worth it getting up off the floor. So teaching them, you know, however ways around, even if it's not pretty for that purpose, I think is fine. But yeah, so lunges, um, squats, bridging to get there, and then all our little stacking, rolling, rolling exercise, and then our basic, back to basic in pieces for the fives. So anything else you guys can think of that is a more basic Pilates principle or Pilates exercise or something that should be broken down? Nice. Yeah. Okay. Walking. That's what Genevieve was saying. So, ooh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> a loaded comment. So what are the components of walking that we see in Pilates, right? We do this naturally. We break down the footwork on the reformer. So that's a big thing, right? Getting them, if you can, get them on the footwork for reformer is fantastic. For feet, ankle, knee, the whole stability up the chain. So I think if you have that access or they have that access, I think that's definitely a great tool. Uh, or the chair even, seated leg presses and standing leg presses are my favorite for the chair. I've started adding in, um, so the components, right, I'll go back, backtrack for a second, are feet, ankles, knees, hips, and then stability, right? So any of those things are key to the success of a walking position. So I've started, I usually start at feet, ankle. That's really where I focus. And glute medius, feet, ankle, glute medius. Those are the three that I go after first. And then you can put in the momentum for the walking itself. So because of the, again, the virtual, I've been taking a TheraBand. Do you want one? You have one? Okay. So I think you guys know this one already, but I take the TheraBand and I put the foot in. And if they have to hold on to the roller, I mean, that's fine too. You could have them hold on to a roller or not. And then stand up super tall on the stance leg. So that's the glute medius side. I'm holding here and then tapping down, right? So I'm creating stability on this stance leg with resistance here. And then I also hold and I pull under, right? So holding strong. Again, it has a lot to do with the stance leg and then sort of mimics that motion of passing the leg under the body. And then I sometimes even do it a little in turnout just for strength purposes, holding it here and then the knee going out and sort of a loose, very loose fifth positioning, right? So both big uh, heel to big toe, ball pressing down. But then here I can really work to slide out and in, zipping up so I can just get a little inner thigh activation happening as well. So I started by stealing this from the chair for my springboard classes with the springboard, because I really, that standing leg lowering on the chair, I think is such a key to success with walking. So I started stealing it from that. That was the idea and then I brought it to the springboard. And then when I couldn't have the springboard, I brought it to the TheraBand. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's a really great way. So glute medius on the stance working, and then the other leg functionally working. You know, this the functional direction is, unless you're a ballet dancer, the functional is always parallel, right? Unless you're dancing ballet, then it would be the turned out, both feet turned out. But also that just wraps, and then you have a chance to work the inner thighs. So I think that's what its value is, more than the actual reproduction of gait. So that, that would be a great way to start with um, all those pieces. And then with gait, we have another issue, which is uh, appropriate amount of range of motion at each joint. So if we break that down, we need like 60 degrees of knee flexion, 15 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. I think it's a minimum of 10 degrees of toe dorsiflexion. Uh, and then 
15 at the hip, extension. So if you don't have any of those pieces of that, then you are not going to get successful gait. Right? So looking at, do they have enough ankle motion? Do they have toe motion? Do they have enough hip extension? Otherwise, if we don't, ha what happens to people who don't have enough hip extension? Go like this. Oh, okay, uh, right. If they don't, two things can happen. Yeah, one of the things with, uh, that would be like the extreme that Kim's showing us, the sort of hunched over without any hip extension. And the gait then goes side to side, shuffles and goes side to side, right? Because there's no passing the leg. What if, if you want your gait to look right and you don't have enough hip extension, where does that go? I think I know you know, yes. <laughs> right into the lower back, right? So if I can't get extension at the hip, but I have to pass the leg, I'm gonna get that in my lower back, right? And so then put that on a runner and they are in physical therapy for the rest of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> or Pilates, hopefully, <laughs> pass them on, right? So, but, but how do you fix something like that is hip extension. So the stretching component also of gait, making sure there's enough hip extension. I, I would say hip extension and ankle dorsiflexion and then glute medius. Those are the three places, again, where I think it's most apparent, uh, most relevant. So that would be stretching hip flexor. Yeah, and we do that a lot in our lunges again. Um, the, the lunge that we do in the scooter position or <clears throat> otherwise called Eve's lunge could be, that could be an opener if they're in the right posture and very functional. We could also do it over the roller, the hips over the roller and the one leg stretching downward. That's a great hip flexor stretch. If you know the Thomas stretch, which I think everyone who's worked with me knows that one with the leg hanging off the edge of the table, one leg up, one leg down, opening the hip flexor. So yes, that would be basic gait back to basic gait training and then get them walking, um, doing exercises in standing, even for the arms in lunging. So hugging a tree in a lunge, front punching in a lunge, um, even that we used to do it uh, more on TRX, but that runner's lunge back and forth, right, holding there and coming up just to get those motions combined with trunk stability because you can't do that if your trunk is wobbly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. What else? Anything else? Any other questions? So is that what you're planning for next week in your back to basics? Is to I... take 45 minutes to do Pilates 5? So Tuesday, <laughs> my Tuesday morning class, is going to be the Pilates fives and a plank. Oh, we didn't get to plank yet. Wow. Plank's our next one. So yeah, my Tuesday morning class, if you would like to attend that or watch it later, is going to be 45 minutes of the fives building up into the fives and then planks. That's it. <laughs> is unwind all the damage that I do in the morning class. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, a lot of swanning and a lot of hip opening and um, yes, and child's pose. Yeah. All right, <laughs> yes, that would be great for the evening class. <laughs> um, and then Thursday, I'll put them in more functional. So we'll do lunges, we'll do squats, we'll do bridging, we'll do more functional on Thursday morning. Um, and then I'll probably have them go through the fives and then do all that functional stuff because I Bump the level up on Thursday to a two three versus a one two on um, Tuesday. Although that one two is going to be nice, a nice one two. So um, plank then how to build into the plank, right? So there are so many ways to go about building up into a plank. If if we were going to go most basic, right? I would go hands and knees, hands and knees plank. Um, which you know we don't often think of as a plank, but it actually you know it's really that precursor. And I do a lot of stability here. So I love, and I think I've shown you guys this before, but I love the coccyx curl from an, on quadruped. So emphasizing that I'm pulling up the belly and creating a coccyx curl and that my upper body, my hands are light. My upper body is light. It's the lower body doing the work and then coming back to the neutral. 
Yeah. So uh, there are so many ways to get to this position. You, and you can have so many purposes for it. But I, I, my favorite is driving from the belly up, tail down, coccyx curl. Then I get open back. And then if I want to incorporate more, I can. But with that, with that work here first, I get my deep abdominals on. Right. And then you could decide based on what your goal is, if you want to fix the upper or the lower, and then there's so much to fix in a blank that you could decide which way you wanted to go. If I was more concerned with the upper, I'd probably keep everybody on their knees, no matter how strong they are. Push the shoulders away, neck long, and hold that there. So now I can really focus on the belly pulling back to the spine without moving the spine. I can focus on the neck reaching long, shoulders wrapping down. And then um, keeping the length from the back of my head through my tailbone, right out and through my knees. So that would get me into my nice half kneeling plank. And I let people have their bottoms up a little bit as they're getting used to taking weight through the arms. I think that's fine. Some people have the wrist issues. So coming on to elbows is fine. But just remember, it is harder to do a plank on elbows than it is to do one on outstretched arms. There's more weight through the shoulders. So if there's somebody who's not strong who needs to be on elbows, maybe putting blocks underneath them to bring their body up will make it easier again, right? So if they're, if they're higher up on elbows, that might be easier. The other way to go about it is to work on the back end of it. Uh, so, and this is one of my pet peeves, is as you get the leg out there, that leg should be not, not like this, relaxed, and I'm trying to take weight. It should be really strong and on. So my quad is active. And if I stand on an active quad, I'm so stable on that leg versus on a, like a f wobbly quad already, my shoulders start really shaky the minute my quad turns off. So getting to that place where you're teaching them that leg. I spend a lot of time here on all fours, and I actually tell them to hook their toes under, push the heel backward, to activate the quad. I'm actively pushing into that quad and it floats this leg, right? So practicing even that, letting them feel that amount of work in the leg and then finding the second leg. Now I'm standing here, I'm solid. Right? My hands are working, but they're light and my elbows are light because I've got so much work in the back end of that. So, you know, you could approach, you could do the pieces of that and then approach that bigger plank if they can handle it. Again, elbows up is easier if they need to go on elbows, so I'd probably start them there. Yeah, and then progressing to more, right? Yeah, and if the toes are a problem, again, you could support the feet onto something, like on an arc or on a blocks for the feet even, but you'd still have that uh, work in the quads. Yeah, you could do what Genevieve's doing. She's tucking her toes under even. You could and really have active, really active feet. So I'm still active in my quads here lifting. What's that? It doesn't help me. It doesn't help my foot. Really. Like, on, it. on the top of the foot. Yeah. So floating the feet then. Putting my ankles. Yeah, you can put ankles on the roller. It's unstable, so that's another level of challenge. You could put your feet on the ball. You could put your feet in a TRX. You could put them on um, a mat, a raised up mat, anything to just get the feet free. But you'd still want to have this um, tightening in the quads that would help to get that activity. And then from there, I also was breaking down earlier, and we'll probably come back to this, is a half. So if you actually want to build to that Pilates push-up, I think lowering down is the key. So I've been ha I was having the classes come into that plank, a half plank for most, and then just work on lowering down and not worrying about the return back up, letting them just come up any way that they can, find their plank again, and lower the way all the way down with sl in slow motion. And that really helps. And then, you know, offering the opposite, which is, you know, pressing back up, for those who, who can do it. But yeah, lowering down, and then even lowering down to the point where they're just hovering over, kind of like what we do in the grasshopper on the reformer, and then either coming up or going down from there. 
So hovering, pulling that rib cage up over the elbows. Right, that's it. And then coming back. Yeah, nice. Or continuing down if coming back feels like the posture is going to get ruined. Yeah. So those are really nice ways to start giving people, um, good, that's it, Kim, giving people confidence to start working on push-ups. I think sometimes it's overwhelming because they don't have, and I've always said, doesn't matter how low you go, it's really more about the form of it. So those are great ways to work up into that push-up or plank push-up. Yeah. And just to throw one more thing in, the flip over, if you were to flip over a plank on a kneeling plank, what do you have? A bridge. A bridge. Right, here we are again. Right? So we have the bridge and we have a really open hipped bridge. So you could work on this open hip bridge. But sometimes with people, when people are really struggling, I put them here and I tell them to really get the feeling on in their butt and their hamstrings and their tummy um, here then take that and flip it over and keep that same work in the butt and the hips and the neck is long and relaxed. Right now I'm in my bridge upside down. Yeah, so that's another way, another great use for a bridge and another way to work on the plank is, is connecting those two movements. Yeah. Yes, what else? So exciting. Pilates nerds. We are Pilates nerds. I'm definitely a Pilates nerd. I get even more excited when it gets more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> These people think they're coming for things. They think they're coming into a simple Pilates class. They have no idea what we're planning in here. <laughs> huh? Any um, other questions about anything else not related to to the topic. No, all good. All right. Okay, well, then, uh, if you guys have questions in the meantime, let let us know, you can always send an email. Um, and we will get it. And then um, next week, let's see, what are we on next week? Oh, Next week is going to be um, focus your work. I'm just driving the same theme home, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Then we get to increase mobility. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, focus your work will be the next time. So we will talk about, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give away. <laughs> we'll talk about that, that then. But any other things, if you guys have questions or client questions and things like that, you can always send them. Oh, I'm most happy to talk about them as well for part of our time. So whatever you need. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, guys. Nice to see you all. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Yay. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, Allison. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I think Allegra is driving. <laughs> Huh, she didn't look like she was moving. She just looked like she was in the car. That's Tiziana put it outside at some point. Oh. I think it might just be the, uh, what's like leading the base down. Oh, and it's, it's leaking out? Yeah. Because oh. it's a heavy lamp.